This is Capital Games. I'm the Wiz. And I'm Zero. Zero. We are here today, this week, uh, talking about what will possibly be the one of the biggest games of the year. And that is Hogwarts Legacy, the Harry Potter brand fel- uh, uh, franchise that is essentially a prequel to the Harry Potter books and movies, but is in a style of a single player RPG that they're doing in, in this game. Uh, reviews have now been released, and the reviews have been overwhelmingly positive, which was a surprise to a lot of people, including me, and I think you too, correct? Yeah, um, I know when I woke up this morning and I was looking at the Open Critic reviews, it was just nothing but um, 8s, 9s, and 10s. Yeah. You had the occasional 7s, um, maybe 6s, and for those that were in the 7s and 6s, uh, the summary generally came off as, uh, well, it's an okay game, but you know, I'm not the biggest Harry Potter fan, so uh, if you are, your score may, may be relatively higher, so take right. that for what you will. Right, which is actually a very good thing for Harry Potter fans, because, I, and we're going to get into it, they've been waiting for a game like this for a long time. And on top of that, the the Harry Potter brand hasn't really had, I don't know, a strong showing since, I don't, wow, maybe in 2013, 2014. The the Fantastic Beast movies have not been doing great. Uh, Some are mixed on it. Even, Even though that's the case, there's still a lot of Harry Potter fans, not just from the books, but from the movies as well. So they all are looking forward to this game. And the fact that the reviews have been strong and unusually strong, considering the landscape <laughs> that the reviews are, are in right now, um, this is poised to be a big deal when it comes to sales and what happens with this game itself. So let's just get right into it. Zero, when we talked about this for the new releases of this month, we both felt that the sales were going to be strong, but we weren't sure about anything past this month because we had to rely on what the quality of the game was. And we weren't hearing anything about the game really until the game was re- is about set to release. And that usually is a bad sign because when it's a game is actually good, even when there is an embargo, you start hearing hints of, this game might actually be good. This game might actually be something you want to look forward to. You get yeah. hints. Go ahead. Yeah, that and uh, sometimes in some cases of some publishers or developers, you may even have like a preview period, kind of like what Nintendo will do with their games, where they'll allow a reviewer or a writer to do a preview uh, period where they can basically play like maybe the first 20 minutes of the game. And then they can write strictly just about the first 20 minutes of the game. So mm-hmm. it might be something like, "Hey guys, we're we're t- we're going to talk about the you know early preview that Nintendo has authorized us to do." And man, oh man, first 20 minutes seem pretty solid. I mean, and typically those end up being kind of a teaser of what's to come. So just uh, that was what I was uh, wondering if um, Avalanche Studios and WB Games were, were even going to have like. A preview period for this and i didn't see a single word uh, there have been youtuber channels that have been covering it in a preview sense but not with gameplay they've been basically talking about the basics of the game that that i, I would say wb and avalanche just gave out in press releases but that's about it you're right like when it comes to like talking about gameplay systems how the game feels and all that there there's been next to no preview coverage on that at all which usually is a bad sign because it, when that happens it usually means someone is trying to hide a potential stinker but since that's not the case and the reviews have been actually pretty good i think we're at open critics is about 86 right now correct i believe so 86 yes so yeah. hogwarts is hogwarts legacy is now at, at a mighty 86 rating with 92 percent of critics recommending it 92 percent of critics re- re- recommending it okay i guess the question that we have now is that we know the sales are st- or we know the reviews are strong this is a brand that is worth billions 
We're talking about over $40 billion. And then before we got on here, we discussed that console gamers who are Harry Potter fans have been starving for a game like this since when was the last one that we we uh, we found out it was? It was 2000. The 2011. Last, that, and oh, yeah, that was a Lego Harry Potter game, and that covered years um, five through seven of the novels. And um, if you're not looking for a um, a Lego uh, based game, I think um, the other major game that uh, was a Harry Potter branded game was a Quidditch World Cup, and that was back in 2003. In the PS2 era. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been a long time. Now that these games are coming out, and it looks like it's going to be a very good game, there is no reason to think that this game is not going to be a huge success. So at this point, we already knew that this month that it was probably going to hit number one in sales, that it was going to sell a lot of copies, but now we have how much is it going to make, okay? I have an idea of what it will make in the first, I would say, total that my estimation is. What do you think the first month sales are going to be? I think it's probably safe to say it'll probably surpass one million copies sold easy yes i'll agree with that um, maybe th- over three million might be pushing it but i mean i think that's probably about as high as i i would maybe conservatively estimate let's do video games right now do you know what the the highest selling the fastest selling game there is right now fastest selling game of all time when it comes to like the first month first month sales what do you think is the one that made the most in units i'll give you a hint it's a blizzard product it's a what now a blizzard product blizzard um warcraft 3 diablo 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 3 uh well well, no i i am wrong diablo 3 made 6.3 million in its first month okay the highest selling game of all time that's fastest is Grand Theft Auto V, 11 million copies within the okay. within its first day. Okay, so let's let's look at that in that aspect because I think at this point we're not looking at something that is just going to be just a good seller. I think it's going to hit this top ten here. So on the top we have the top is 11 million units sold. Grand Theft Auto 5. With the amount of units that we have right now, the bottom on the t- bottom 10 is about 3 million, which is Grand Theft Auto 4. Do you think that Hogwarts Legacy will hit that in its first either one in the first month? Hmm, that's that's a good question. Potentially, I think it could come it could come very close to um, Grand Theft Auto 4's numbers. The only reason I say that is mostly because of just the fact that there hasn't been a true, a true Wizarding World game since a good while ago. And yeah. for anyone who plays on consoles who has wanted something that is a Wizarding World game and not in the LEGO universe, then this is probably everything they're asking for. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's going to hit 5 million copies. I don't think it will beat Diablo 3, but it will beat Pokemon X and Y. Pokemon X and Y uh, is on the list here at over 4 million copies, it looks like. So I think I think 5 million is a, a good estimate that it's going to make on this one. So I'm expecting 5 million first month uh, on this. First week of sales, 2.5, 2.6 million? Yeah. That would probably be a safe and conservative um, bet, in my opinion. Yeah, that's con- that's a conservative. You're absolutely right. That's a conservative bet. That is like, like, like if we're not going crazy here, this could hit. I would say th- this month eight eight bill eight million, possibly. I- I'll say this: it's going to make its money back this month. I I don't think it's that's going to be an issue. I think it's going to. 
make uh, its budget back and then some on that month. And WB Games is going to be super thrilled with the results on this one. So that's really that's that's really all this episode is going to be is not how much money that uh, Hogwarts Legacy is going to make. Is it, is it going to make all the money this month, essentially, in this one? So I'm, yeah, I'm thinking five million sold by the end of the month. And even then, I think five million may just be uh, may just be on the conservative side, especially if we take into account just that there potentially could be a giant contingency of very starved Wizarding World fans who have been like, I want an actual game. No Lego games, just an actual, factual Wizarding World game. Right. And this is a $40 billion franchise, of which video games only has about a 3-4% stake into what its brand is. The, and right now I'm looking I'm looking at an outdated estimation of the amounts that it makes in video games. But according to Wikipedia, I know I'm using Wikipedia, sorry. Video games only take up about 3 billion when it comes to its net worth uh, when it comes to that brand. Just 3 billion. I can see that doubling, maybe even tripling by the end of this when it comes to that. Here's the other thing too. Right now, the only versions that are coming out are the next-gen console versions, the PS5, Xbox Series X ones. And then I think the following month is going to be the previous-gen versions, and then July is going to be the Switch versions. Call me crazy, but I think the Switch version is probably going to end up being the best-selling one, unless that one is so gimped that it would be silly to do it. But I think that might end up being the best-selling one. There's also a possibility that the reason it could be the best-selling one is because just there are some people who just do not care about you know, just um, eye-bleeding graphics. They just want the ability to play wherever they want to go. Right. Though I think the only problem I see with that is that um, apparently the game does require constant communication to a, um, a home server. And with hmm. the Switch um, being being mobile if you're away from an internet connection you're not going to be able to sync up with whatever the master server is so i think that's where in lays uh, lays a problem with the switch version but um if there are people who are playing on switch who just do not care that may not even be a thought to them that may just be sort of something that they'll they just go oh well no biggie i'm just gonna want to sit and play this game on my tv that's true that is true um okay so we we have what we think it will make in first month we we have what we believe the sales are going to be unit wise let's step it up a notch let's do it emerald agassi style i know that got you excited um (laughs) bam there we go bam there we go okay my god i thought i was gonna lose you there okay so (laughs) at Emerald and Gossi. What the hell am I doing? Um, all right. Total sales. Here, here is the big one. What do we think total sales are going to be? Now, before you, 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 you tell me what you think it is, let's, let's talk about the games that have made the most sales units-wise uh, so far. Number one's Minecraft with 238 million units. 238 million. That's also multi-platform. It's been out for like 12 years. I don't think it's going anywhere near. Grand Theft Auto 5, 175 million. Uh, that's also now what? Nine, like 10 years. Okay. Not going anywhere near that either. Here's where it gets a little interesting. Wii Sports, 82.9 million units. Okay. That's also a pack in. So I think that's not going to go anywhere near that either. Here's the interesting ones. PUBG, 75 million. Super Mario Brothers, the original for the NES, 58 million. Mario Party 8 Deluxe, 56.8 million. Red Dead Redemption 2, 50 million. And let's go all the way to the bottom uh, till we hit, here we go. 
On the bottom, 22.7 million. Uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 for the Xbox 360 PS3 from November 2009. I think total sales will hit somewhere in between those lines. So let's hone down in a number where we think this is going to end up. Let's start with you. <laughs> mm. I, I have a number. Do you think the sales will, are going to exceed Modern Warfare 2? And if you do think of that, where exactly do you think it will land? Wow, there's there's, um, there's some that are kind of surprising, actually. Go ahead. It may uh, potentially beat the original Modern Warfare 2 release, but I don't think it's going to be like by a large margin. And again, um, most of this is more me speculating on the fact that just Harry Potter console game fans have just been so starved for yes. a, a actual factual Wizarding World game that isn't just set in the Lego universe. Um, I would say maybe a conservative estimate of maybe 22.5 or 22.3 by next year. If we're going to count like one year for for potential lifetime sales, I don't know. No, lifetime sales. like Lifetime, so yeah. we're talking a decade maybe? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so maybe, um, maybe if it does manage to just smash... Um, smash barriers and records uh, when it goes on sale officially this coming Friday, then I would say maybe um, maybe 22.5, uh, 22, maybe 23 at the most. So but you think it... If, go ahead, I'm sorry. But that's if this, uh, this ends up uh, kind of... The users and gamers out there just feel that it does meet what all the reviewers have been saying all day today, that, you know, just, hey, this is one of the best uh, Wizarding World games that that we've seen in a while it's it's an open world form so you know you can wander uh, you can wander around the wizarding world a whole bunch and stuff like that so uh, that's one of the big things that i could see and then depending on if it has any season pass potential uh, more expansion content and things like that then okay. that too could also sort of open things up as well but to reaching that goal of 22.5 or 23 co uh, twenty-three million copies um, within a decade. I think that's way too conservative, to be completely honest with you. I mean, you you think that it, it either is not going to reach Modern Warfare 2, or it may just slightly go there. Yeah, that's my personal opinion, but you know me. I, I'm kind of yeah. conservative on my guesses. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. I looked at this earlier, and I came up with... It's going to beat Grand Theft Auto 4. So I was going to say something along the lines of, I would say 26 million is where it, it will hit, around that area will hit. I think it will beat Pokemon Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. It may not hit Borderlands 2. It may, or it, it may or may not. I think 26, 27 is where it hits. Around around that area, I think this is going to be uh, a huge game. And here's a question uh, for you and the audience: What do you think is a bigger brand, Call of Duty or Harry Potter? I want to say I think it's Harry Potter, mostly because just um, they're a much more broad franchise with movies, theatrical uh, plays, books, and video games. Whereas I think Call of Duty is just more centered around just video games in general. They're there's no diversification with the Call of Duty brand. It's Harry Potter, but not by much. Like we're okay. talking, we're talking the matter of one to two billion. Crazy, right? Like just yeah. one to two billion is the difference between Harry Potter and Call of Duty, according to Wikipedia. According to Wikipedia. So, yeah, I'm looking at this and saying essentially, I think 27 is the max it makes. 27 million units sold. And you, you are right. If this ends up having uh, downloadable content and it has uh, expansions in the game, which it may it may have that, this can be more dollars when it comes to the sales. But when it comes to unit sell, I, I think 27 million is where it, it will make that, z that max. It, it will be one of the best selling games of all time after things are said and done. But... I don't think it's going to be the best song because there's no way it's going to get like Minecraft or GTA numbers. I don't think it's even going to like it's and it's not cheap enough to get the units sold of yeah of like Tetris, Minecraft, PUBG. Like it's not cheap enough. Like that's not going to happen. But 
like Terraria has 44.5 million units sold. Jesus. But uh, while saying that, I think it's not in the, within the realm of possibility that it reaches at least 27. I wouldn't be shocked if it hit 30. But if it... I would be stunned if it made 40. But, but would I be surprised? Not really, because the Harry Potter books and the movies are beloved movies and beloved books. I mean, they were first books, but the movies made more money and more people are more... I, I would say they're more... Not invested, but they're more aware of the movies than the book, I think. Like, I think more people have seen the movies than read the book at this point. I would not be... Yeah, I, I just I would not be surprised if it hit 30, but I think it's going to be about 27 million units sold. Which, by that estimation, if we have 27 million times $70, we're looking at a dollar amount of... $1.8 billion. <laughs> $1.8 billion is what I'm saying it might make. If this game makes $2 billion, like, at, at this point, you have a franchise here. You have a big franchise that you, you have coming up here. And like you've said, too, uh, you're also dealing with a franchise that people have been begging for a game for a while now and they're about to get it so we both might have conservative estimates here but yeah this is going to be a huge game on this one i think it'll be very very curious to see either first day or first uh, week numbers uh, especially with the game coming out to regular retail um by this friday yeah and i forgot that if you digitally pre-order the <clears throat> um the deluxe edition you get 72 hours early access to the game yeah so um access will technically start i believe tomorrow so right um and it is a bit weird too because i believe um wb games and avalanche have said that there will not be a preload period so uh, for anyone who's doing the deluxe edition I can only imagine those servers are going to be jammed with people. Wait, you, you can't you can't preload right now? Oh, this is a sixty dollars game on PC. Okay, wow. I didn't know yeah, that. I think it's sixty, but um, there might be a deluxe edition upgrade on yeah. Steam right now for seven. And yeah, you get a Griffin mount. Yep, Griffin mount and the early access period of um, uh, seventy two hours ahead of its retail release. God, ten dollars to play the game early. Good lord. Yeah, so some, some cosmetic DLC and then uh, just the ability to start playing our game. We, we both agree this is going to be a huge seller. I guess the other question that I have is, and I, I've waffled back and forth on this, does it make more sales than Tears of the Kingdom? Mm, that's a tough one. Let's, let's go over how much... Let's go over how much uh, Breath of the Wild made. Wild sales. Okay. 27 million copies for Breath of the Wild alone on Switch. And bear this in mind, when it first came out, it, barely anybody had a Switch. Okay? Yep. Now, so to compare Breath of the Wild first month sales to this would be unfair. It, it, that, I'm not even attempting that. But uh, what do you think? Uh, do, you, do you think that Breath of the Wild uh, or Tears of the Kingdom makes more sales this year or does uh harry or does this uh, how how worth legacy does it that's a bit tough that's why um, i pay the big bucks let's hear <laughs> i think the edge may potentially go to hogwarts legacy but strictly because of the fact that hogwarts legacy is coming out to just about damn near everything well it's not coming to everything right away it's only coming to the the next gen consoles and it's coming out to pc so it's not come to PS4 and Xbox One right away. It's only coming to the next gen consoles. Right. So, and bear in mind, Breath of the Wild did 3.8 million in its first month. Okay. And what made that interesting is that not even that many Switches sold <laughs> that month as well. So. There was wasn't there a situation where the game sold more than the Switch at a certain point because people couldn't get a hold of the Switches? Yeah, um, I still remember that 
quite fondly because um, I had some friends who had missed um, multiple GameStop pre-order drop periods yeah. for the Switch consoles, but um, the minute that the deluxe and limited editions of uh, Breath of the Wild came out, you had some people just going, I can't get the console, but man, oh man, I want that that super deluxe collector's version that's got the Master Sword statue, the Sheikah Slate um, switch case, and all that stuff. I'm going to make sure to lock my pre-order in just to get that one. Mm. And uh, so you had a, a case of people doing that, and then you had also some cases of people just going, I'm just going to pre-order this because... As I just have a feeling this is just going to be a hot selling game. Everyone's going to want it. And maybe by the time I can get my Switch, there might be a situation where, you know, it's just plain sold out because Switch stock has finally caught up with the demand. And, you know, just people uh, people were holding off on buying their first game um, when they were buying their Switch. So I want this to be this first game that I pop into this brand new console and just start playing on it right away. Yeah. I think uh, I think Tears of the Kingdom outsells this. I, I think by I think what's going to happen is that for the year, Hogwarts Legacy is the best-selling game of the year. Bearing in mind that maybe Starfield becomes huge, but I think it's going to be Hogwarts Legacy. But when it comes to total sales, I think Tears of the Kingdom takes it. Yeah, and that's a fair thought too, especially since. Um... I want to say Tears of the Kingdom might have more worldwide appeal, mm -hmm. which is completely fair too. Um, because to be uh, to be completely honest, I don't know how big the worldwide appeal for the Wizarding World stuff there is. Oh, huge! Uh, I don't know what it's like in Asia or, or Japan or, or whatever. So you don't make billions if it's not worldwide appeal. Like this is yeah bil billions. The amount that it makes in, in that right now for the whole entire franchise. I mean, this is this these books have been translated to multiple languages. It sells out in different parts of, of the world. Like there are a lot of fans of this book. Like the the books that not only just the books but the movies themselves. The movies themselves made about ten billion in like in box office. So. I, I think there is a worldwide appeal. I I think it's as simple as more people have Switches than they have the next co gen consoles right now. And I don't think the previous gen consoles are going to sell that much. Um, they might sell a good amount, but the Switch is ever present. Like a lot of gamers have a next gen console and a Switch. And the precise reason why they have the Switch is for Nintendo games. So with that, I think that's gonna to lead to more people getting Tears of the Kingdom, essentially. Like, I think that's where it's gonna to come down to. Um, yeah, and that's a fair point too. I think it just kind of falls back to the point that I made just a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really gonna be curious to see what the first week or um, first day sales are, especially since um, every once in a while, just we've seen it creep to the number one a spot on Steam for things um, uh, most purchased, but even when it fell out of being first place, it was still within top ten. So I mean, it it was uh, the pre-orders on Steam were selling like hotcakes, and I know uh, GameStop has it featured as like one of their big promos. It's literally right at the top of the page with a big old Hogwarts Legacy uh, button, mm -hmm. and when you press the button to expand it, it even starts auto playing the trailer. So, I mean, they uh, they've got the advertising done. So it's in the mindset for any Wizarding World fans out there to just go, oh shit, the new Harry Potter game, gotta gotta have it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that will be the curious point to see um, just what the next gen and PC sales are, especially considering that um, Switch and eighth gen consoles are going to be released a bit later, but. Um, even with those releases, we might see a little bit of a spike in sales when those are So it'll definitely be interesting to see how it sells on um, ninth gen and PC, but I'll probably definitely want to follow up and see what the sales are like when 8th gen and Switch come out. Right. This also is going to bear in mind that if the mainstream media decides to cover this as well, they may cover the controversy. I really don't think they will, but for the most part 
when a huge game comes out, especially in a big franchise that is multimedia like this, usually we have Good Morning America and stuff like that covering that because they want parents to know what the big games are the kids may be asking for, and this will probably be one of them. I think, again, it will sell big. Just how big is the question? And it'll be interesting to see what happens. Maybe we should come back to this uh, in, in a month, just as a uh, on our weekly dividend. We'll, we'll cover that when we find out what the numbers are and see how well we did. This is more speculation, and this is uh, this is to be honest, more of a fun mental exercise for me, if anything. Yeah. <laughs> no, same here. All right. Well, that is it for this segment of Capital Games. Uh, tune in next time we discuss the going ons and happenings that are is happening in the business side of video games. I am the Wiz, and I'm Zero, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye.